very bright in here now. It is. <laughs> it's like a whole new room. I need little flaps for my glasses. Yeah, or those the self-tinting ones that you had before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those worked well. But yeah, well, that's good, okay? The universe has been conspiring against us for a while like for this episode, so we're finally back. Yeah, we were without power and water for a few days, and... Holidays, and just like a combination of things. Yeah, like just... Equipment failures. The equipment failure really started the whole thing off. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we just gone. To, we just sat down to do this episode, and like the head of the tripod just it fell, it broke right off. But as we sat down, so we had to put it in a hold. Uh, we had ordered some new lights, and new then gear, and there was a postal strike in Canada. Postal strike, so, and then <laughs> the storm. So the stuff just kind of was <laughs> laying wherever, yeah, not being delivered, and then we had the storm. Yeah, the worst storm we've had in twenty years. At least, yeah. It took our power out for a couple of days. Yeah, no power and, for a couple uh, of days. No water for a couple no of days. No water. So, uh, and then Christmas. And then Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back. Okay. Intro. Cue intro music. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 22. It feels like forever since we've listened to these albums. It has been. I know. I considered actually listening to a few of them again. Thankfully, to... I'm uh, intimately familiar with this first one because <laughs> I used to own it myself and played it a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This seems like a Vicky album. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first one. Uh, so the first one is Sherry Ulrich, uh, One Step Ahead. Number two is Brian Plummer, No Questions. Oh, I didn't even notice he had a giant hole punch, too. Okay, I understand. Okay. Uh, third one is Heaven's Radio, Uptown Babies. Oh, it's just getting... I haven't done this for a while. i got to get organized again. Okay. That'll take us five episodes to get yeah, back to the again. Yeah, something will happen where we'll stop for a while. It's like, what the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh... Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Yeah, well, we need to. We need to get a snapper. Okay, anyway. A snapper? I can just... So, Sherry Alrick, one step ahead. Uh, the genre is pop. She's a Canadian-American musician and songwriter. She's very talented. She plays the, the violin, the mandolin, the guitar, the piano, and the dulcimer. She's still very actively making music and performing. Um, I've seen tons of uh, oh really it's just all there. tons of ads for her performing at different functions around the island. The, uh, yeah, yeah, she's a local resident. Um, so there we go. So she, and she's still putting out albums. Mm. So One Step Ahead was released in 1981 and was her second solo release. She's also appeared on albums with the bands Pied Pumpkin, the Hometown Band, and others. Um, yeah, she's played with a lot of people like oh, well, yeah, Long John Baldry. Yeah, that's and... going to be my. So you said so, uh, solo. So I just I was because that was going to be my next question. Yeah. So which band? So it's just a bunch of other bands. Yeah, oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. She's been one. making music for okay. a long time. Um. So uh, as she has a lovely blog on her um, her website. If you want to learn more about her, <laughs> um, I was in there reading a bunch. She calls Bowen Island home. Oh, the Bowen Island. Bowen okay, Island, yeah. and. Um, which isn't too far from us. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Yeah, local. Um, the track listing. Not Gonna Stop. Save It. One Step Ahead. Starlight. How Bad Do You Want It. Side 2 is Romeo. Alone With Me. She Remembers. Bringing Back Your Love. And Birdman. Okay, uh, so out of those songs... Which would be the one that you think would be uh, we should grab that you like or that we should play for the people at home so we get a little taste? Actually, my favorite off this album is She Remembers. She remembers. Yeah. Okay, hold on a sec. Can you hear it? Okay. So that's what it sounds like. Um, that's it. Uh, you entered it into Discogs. What did you find about the... The pressing and whatnot. Okay, so uh, this is an original pressing. Um, pop, like you said, Canada, 81. Um, condition, uh, covers, and it's all right. Yeah, uh, there's some... 
It's a little bit beat up. See, this is one of those things I have a hard time with because it's really a flimsy cardboard case and it just, it feels like it's sucked up all the humidity in the room and it's just kind of smushy and bendy. Yeah. But I mean, it's not ripped. Uh, other than a little bit of wear on the corners and up here, like it's, it's, it's okay. So all right-ish. And, uh, <laughs> uh, like I said, fade, like it's up here and the side, stuff like that. Um, inner sleeve. Uh, it's in good condition. Album pokes out a bit in the bottom. Just, I mean, it's fucking a million years old. What are you gonna do? But other than that, you know, we got the lyrics there. Got a picture of Sherry there. Um, the vinyl, uh, it was, it was good. No scratches, no mold. It played well. It sounded okay. Like, uh, I didn't, uh, the audio was clean. No pops or hisses. The mix was alright for the type of music that it is. It's not really demanding that way. Uh, I'm just going through my notes because we've been off. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm trying to remember everything about the album. Yeah, for me, it would be the kind of album <laughs> that I would put on in the background when I'm making art or mm -hmm. um, just kind of reading yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not in your face. It's nice, cool, melodic music that can play in the background. And uh, Yeah, well, it's poppy, adult, poppy, safe stuff. Stuff you mm -hmm. do that you like, for sure. Yeah. Um, I would listen to other stuff that I would have on before this ever came on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, album design, uh, actually a long time friend of the show, personal friend, uh, personal friend of the show. <laughs> no, uh, local artist again, uh, James Amara, who's done a lot of, actually pretty much any of the Canadian albums that we've talked about, he's had a hand in, and he did this one too, uh, out of Vancouver, and still does lots of stuff, see the other episodes, I'm not repeating it all. Uh, he also had help with uh, somebody called Carol, <laughs> it looks like La Fluffy, it's hilarious. I've been trying to look that name. It's really, I'm gonna L E F L U F Y, Fluffy, and uh, John Mastro Mastro Monaco Mastro Monaco. Now, uh, so Almera, we know that is a local dude, photog, video, bands like Trooper, Loverboy, shit like that. Colin James, uh, Carol worked on albums from BTO. Paola's, uh, she's another local person, born in Van, um, has a gallery, and it's actually pretty cool, uh, it's called I-E-Y-E-Forward.com, that's her gallery, and um, Master Monaco, we work as an, uh, work on artists such as um, Sherry, uh, Sherry, Sherry Melissa Bram, and a band called Liberty, that's all I get to him, and uh, once again, Born in Vancouver. Vancouver, yeah. This is a very local da, da, advertising and move to directing. He's still working in um, commercials and stuff today. You know that newest one they had of Subaru where the cars are like out and free ranging and shit? Mm. Yeah, he did that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. There's the three people. They've all gone on to do other things. I started out doing this kind of stuff. Uh, the producer, too, I didn't talk about her. It was, oh, or yep. him, actually. Him, yeah. Claire Lawrence, he was a founding member of the Canadian band The Collectors, hmm. which transitioned to the band Chilliwack, which oh, yeah. is another yeah. CanCon. Yeah. Still playing today. A successful uh, Canadian band. Yeah. Uh, he left the group in 1971 to produce a number of prominent artists and groups, including Susan Jacks, Valdi, uh, Sherry Ulrich, and he produced a show on CBC Radio for a long time mm -hmm. called The Canadian Gold Rush. That was hosted by Terry Terry David Mulligan, Mulligan who oh, is also <laughs> another big name in radio from and music from across Canada. Yeah, music and stuff, yeah. And he scored the music to the CBC, CBC show The Beach Combers. Yeah, oh, which wow. is another yeah. Canadian yeah. Uh, for you. iconic series yeah, for that sure. everybody should know about. Yeah. So I just want to say too, because I kind of got away from reviewing the actual because it's subjective mostly, but you know me, I, I hate. Just photos of artists. Well, at least it's. I kind of like this one because of the way it's colorized. Yeah, I was gonna say it's colorized and it's airbrushed, so like it's yeah. blurred a bit. And there's yeah. something to it. It reminds me a lot of the other guy's name, who did that. He's the old Italian guy. Fuck. Anyways, it's really similar to that. I actually don't mind that gray and yellow. I don't like. Yeah, that, it's easier like... to read a lot. We found yeah. a lot that yeah. you can't read what's on the back because the colors are. Yeah, there's a little bit of music. Oh yeah, things. I didn't notice that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, anyways, I don't mind that, that that one so much, but I'm not like I said, I'm not a huge fan of just artists. Of just artists, and, yeah. And the next one's gonna be the same too. Okay, I'm I'm good. That's all my stuff. Yeah. Um. 
The sale history. Yeah. On Discogs, uh, 505. Mid is seven fifty three, and in mint condition, ten dollars. Ten to ten. Hmm. Which, by today's standards, if you were to buy that album, it's probably thirty five. Oh, they probably charge you thirty five for it. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be the going rate for albums these days, which is a sad state of affairs. They're taking advantage of the resurgence of vinyl and totally gouging. Mm -hmm, totally. Uh, so, what was your rating? Rating is I love this album, and I like I said, I used to own it. So I would listen to it again. Um, yeah. Back in the collection. Uh, yeah, and for me, I just I just don't care. You can find these albums anywhere in any any cheap bin. So um, I don't have, like, I don't want to necessarily throw the hate at it that we throw some of the albums. Like, throw all the garbage and shit on it. and <laughs> well, down fire. Yeah, I just, I just don't care. Um, so I guess garbage? Yeah, she's definitely out of your wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, and like I said, it's not with, like, prejudice or anything like no, that. No, no, I know. It's just, like, I don't care. It's soft adult contemporary shit that you can hear on the radio, so. So, I mean, I'm not, I'll give her credit, you know, how these, some of these talented artists who thought. Her daughter is quite the musician, too, and apparently they all play together. And, oh, do they? Yeah. yeah, so it's, yeah. So, yeah, I would appreciate that, but, yeah, it's, like, it's definitely not, my, like you said, not my wheelhouse, so. Yeah. yeah. Dump star. Oh, sorry. And so, Sherry down. This next album, Brian Plummer, No Questions. The genre is rock. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, I've never heard of this guy. Never, never, never. Oh, really? Never. Huh. No. I've definitely heard of him. No. Heard of him, not his music, though. Even though some of it seemed kind of familiar. But yeah, I'm with you. I've heard of the name, but. So here we have another Canadian musician. Mm -hmm. Born in Tisdale, Saskatchewan. He was in a band called Trina. And when they split up, he teamed with lyricist Al Higby. Um, this is a collaboration that he did with Al. Hmm. Did I say Al? Yeah. And um, once he hooked up with Al, he became more successful. Hmm. And so, no questions. This is his first album, released in 1980, resolving or re resulting, <laughs> resolving, <laughs> resulting in two hits, "Money Talks" and "Jackie Boy," off of this album. Uh, he eventually re released six more solo albums and two albums with a band called The Suspects. <laughs> Another band I've not heard of. Mm -hmm. So there's. So uh, you want to give us a rundown of the... Uh, you want to go into the... No, I've got you here, D for Discogs. Your entry into Discogs. Oh, okay. All right, then. Uh, so like you said, no questions, Brian Plummer. Uh, original run. Uh, it's got a hole punch, so it's probably discounted. Um... 1980, the, uh, the label is Change Records, which I don't know, I wonder if they exist anymore. It's out of Saskatchewan. This is manufactured by MCA Records. Yeah, yeah, but the there, and it was recorded in, in Saskatoon and mixed in Toronto, so I mean, it's just a <laughs> manufacturing thing. Yeah, so that's real Canton. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, condition is, other than the hole punch, uh, you know, like, once again, we're getting into stuff as old as me, so it's not so bad. It's always these... It's always these little splits and, and stuff at the, around here. Yeah, no, that one's in pretty good shape. I'm trying to get a condom mark, but in terms of some of the ones we've seen, like it's it's not in bad shape at all. So, no, that's actually in the album. Is it in the album or is it something? I think it's a dead bug. <laughs> I don't know. Give me character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and the sleeve, it said. Uh, so the hole punch, but other than that. It looks okay. Oh, I like the color. Like, it's kind of old-timey. Yeah. It, with the washed out. The glue has broken down a little bit here uh, over the years. But other than that, it's still in good condition. It's, um... There's some lyrics for the songs there. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. Um, the vinyl is in good condition. There's no obvious scratches. It sounded clean and decent dynamics. Some, uh, it's had some minor popping and hissing, but other than that, it... It wasn't too bad in that regard. Um, photography is by a guy named Robert. Photography is by some guy named Robert. Uh, I, I will put up the last name. Dal Tradici. Yeah, there. We'll see it that way. And I'm going to start putting in a try and go to like Google or something and have it pronounce it for me or at least write it down phon phonetically. So phonetically. Phonetically so I can do it. Anyways, okay, so. Uh, Robert, he did, uh, he's a Canadian photographer, most known for documenting um, nuclear disasters, particularly Three Mile Island. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Yeah, he's made some award-winning documentaries, and uh, this is he started out doing this basic stuff. It, it always it's amazing that it's, fr it's frustrating and amazing at the same time that that shit like that can make lead to other things. You know what I mean? Award-winning things. Award-winning things. Like, yeah. That's there's nothing special about any of these fucking photos. I, I honestly throw away shit that looks like that. And uh, anyways. So, uh, yeah, Three Mile, uh, and he's a teacher, right, uh, he currently teaches right now at Concordia University, Concordia University in Ontario, so, well, uh, I'll go back, where the Concordia University is. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, and his only music credits were for Brian Plummer, so this one and his next album, I think, and that's it, and he went to doing documentaries. <laughs> so after that, he's like, screw this, yeah, I'm like, going to do something bigger. This. No more taking pictures of... Rock stars. Yeah, so if you want to go look it up, some of that stuff he did for Three Mile Island is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, songs. Uh, songs. Money Talks, No Questions, Jackie Boy, so the two hits are on slide A. Yeah. The Wizards Have Come, Roll Away the Stone, side two is Full Moon on the Midway, mm -hmm. Killing Time, Change the World If You Want, Hole in the Wall and Losing Touch. So what are those songs? Which one do you think we should give a taste of right now? Probably like Money Talks or no Yeah, questions. yeah. Okay, here we go. This probably be Money Talks. Money Talks. Playing right now. Like I said, Money Talks and Jackie Boy are two and Money Talks. Money Talks. My daddy said, son, set your heart on the sky. No, it's not like a, it's not that it's bad. Anything. It's just that uh, I you just too much of this stuff falls into the same category. It's just like adult guitar rock pop. Yeah, I. It, it gets I, all smushy together, and I can't really tell the difference. I'm sure people love Brian Plummer. He's got some great songs. To me, it's just like yeah, okay, great. He's a boy from Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. He will age well. <laughs> um, I wrote down that I like this album. Okay. I'd never heard of him before we oh, listened to it. Better than Cherries, I guess. Uh, some of the songs had a punk rock sound to me, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, a lot of the bands from this era just remind me of bar bands who just yeah. kind of snag the record contract. Yeah, they just punk out so the bar. So I would go to a bar and listen to this. Is, is well, if some of this stuff was playing in a bar, that would be fine. To me, I don't want that experience at home, though. And a lot, uh, again, I go back to CanCon, has done so much for bands like this and people like him to give them exposure and uh, allow them to make a living make doing something that they loved. Yeah, and I'm just writing down for songs here too that it's like none, none of them sounded familiar to me, but they all like like I had Bruce Springsteen question mark, folk rock question mark, Colin James question mark. So it's just like it sounded like a lot of other bands. And the producer for this album yeah. is, is named JJ Stewart, who I could not find anything about. Discogs was barren, Wikipedia was barren, um, when I put in J.J. Stewart, a lot of other people came up, Yeah, and there was no way to discern whether they were the same person, so. Yeah, it happens. Uh, so, uh, what's your review? Oh, sorry, the um, sales history. Sale history is sixteen or $10.64 across the board, whatever, yeah, no matter what whatever kind the of shape they're in. Okay, so and what was your... Um, Rating for this guy. Uh, my rating is meh. Yeah, I, that's the issue. Yeah, it's meh. It's kind of in the meh category with everything else. I don't, I don't loathe it. No, it's not one of those I would say burn. No. Burn up with fire. No, not at all. It's just. Um, like, it's not something that I would ever. Never seek out again. To the art project bin. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, Brian, Brian down. Brian Plummer down. Right, and uh, third one of probably one of the weirder ones. My God, yeah. Um, I question why your father had this album in his collection. Yeah, I, 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 I guess, I guess I get some of it because, like, the second side. Okay, let's start at the top because yeah, right. this is a weird one to get into. So, Heaven's Radio, <laughs> Uptown Babies. The genre is listed as rock reggae. Uh, yeah, us, I'll comment about that a little yeah. bit later. So, Ottawa, Canada-based blues, reggae, funk, soul rock band. Mm -hmm. um, 
inactive after the 80s and then reunited for a time in 2007. Yeah, they did like a couple of one-offs or something. Uptown Babies was the second of two albums, and it was released in 1979. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, Canada, like you said, the 79, this original, got a hole punch, that I actually didn't notice the first time around was hole punch, but I understand why. Um, hole punch, but other, other than that, uh, other than the condom marks, this is actually great for condition, and not only that, but I, the quality of the cover is actually solid too. Oddly enough, like, it feels firm, and there's a few stains, probably mold. I don't know, cotton? Right? From all that time it's spent in the crawl space? That's definitely mold, yeah. But, I mean, other than, like, if you, you can clean up a lot of that, and it's, it's, it's in good condition. It's not ripped or torn, it's just a hole punch. Um, some stains and mold, that's what I have. Great condition. Yeah, the, the vinyl itself is like it never fucking been played. Uh, obviously, don't wonder why. The audio... Like I said, it's going to seem weird, really weird when we get into it. The audio was actually really good. Like, the quality of the sound and the mastering and the instruments, fantastic. Like, that, that part was down really well. Uh, so, album photos. Um, this is an interesting one, because there's a lot of photos here, but there's also three names, and I can't find information about any of them. So, yeah, I found that, I have a note here that says, there's so little as far as info about yeah, this band. Yeah, it's impossible to find. Um, it says the producer was a guy named Ted Giroux. But again, no info yep. anywhere. And so the, the photos were by a person or a group called Film Crews, uh, Jim Cochran, and Pete Walker. And I can't find anything linking anything. Yeah, yeah. I actually, and it's funny too, because I actually, and once again, it's a, yeah, that's kind it's of a, a stupid band photo, but I like the colors. There's lots going on. Like, it's another one of those ones where I can kind of get away with it because it's not just them on like an ID. Yeah. It's them out having some hard drinks. And the colorization is colorization, really kind of yeah. cool, too. Yeah. It's the color key all done in, you know, complementary hues. And so, so yeah, um, uh, I'm with you. It just, uh, you, you want to read the titles of the songs? Yeah, the track listing. <laughs> um, Uptown Babies, Little Piece of Heaven, I Ain't Got It, The Round and Round, New Moon Lawn, Keep On Drumming, Oh, sorry. Keep, keep, on, keep on running. I <laughs> can't read my writing again. Uh, Rough Rider, Soul Rebel, River of Jordan, and Heed the Word of the Lord. Mm hmm. So, let's get into this shit. Because it's a weird, weird fucking album that borderlines on races. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's mostly white guys. I think there's one kind of mixed guy. I think this guy. And I don't think he's like black. He's like. Japanese or something, but they do a lot of like black, um, they, when, African um, when they do their church, reggae, the reggae, the reggae. There's a little bit of religious stuff, so there's like this like crazy fake Jamaican. Oh, it's weird having a band of like white Canadians do these, uh, you know, church songs and reggae and stuff. It was the first time it was really fucking off putting. Yeah, I remember it even like it broke down as. <laughs> White reggae, poppy, racist. It just, well, and it doesn't mean that it necessarily is. It just came across that way now. Yeah. yeah. For the first song, Uptown Babies, I said a bunch of white guys from the 80s singing about ghettos and inequality. Yeah. And it just didn't seem like it No, it was, it was off-putting. It was weird. And then a little piece of heaven. I, oh my God, jazz riffs. Um, and then the reggae accents. So, yeah, well, and that's the thing. It goes into the reggae. So, there's actually a Bob Marley song on here. Soul Rebel is a Bob Marley cover. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, like I said, they have other church songs and stuff like that. There's a, so Bob Marley and there's a Blind Willie McTell um, cover. So, we get into the, you know, like I said, some of the, the black musicians and shit, but it's just weird. Because what's weird about it is that actually these guys are really fucking good at playing. The musicianship, yeah. Yeah. Like, really good. Like, I enjoyed them playing, but what they played was kind of off-putting. Yeah. Very, very weird. I'm with you. I don't know why my dad would ever own this one. <laughs> That's a fucking weird one. Well, I guess because they were from Ottawa, maybe your dad saw them in a bar one night. I don't I know. It's hole punch, so maybe it was cheap. And you know what? Like I said, it's just so odd. Maybe even one of this other one was in the bar, maybe. But still, just because, like I said, it's white guys covering other kinds of songs. It's... But they played really well, though. Like, that second side was a little better than the first yeah. side. The first yeah. side was a little hard to swallow. But, like I said, it's just weird having a bunch of white guys cover 
um, you know, old Russian fishermen. But I mean, I guess, I guess Zeppelin and Rolling Stones and shit have been doing that forever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just this, this one seems so weird to begin. The first side just seemed... I guess for me, the whole reggae yeah, accent, yeah. Jamaican... Because I'm trying to be Jamaican, yeah. Yeah, it was just kind of really off-putting. So that's why it's so weird to me. Because, like I said, as actual musicians, they were really fucking tight. Uh, really good. I'd like to hear them not play this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Some other night. Also. So what song should we put on here for the for the good people off? The good six people at home watching this. I right say now. Soul Rebel. Okay. Bob Marley, Bob Marley cover. cover. Okay. So let's do it right now. Yeah, I'm going to put Dreadlines. Maybe with Blaze going. So yeah, so there you go. Like, like I said, great musicians, fucking weird songs <laughs> for, for a bunch of white guys and maybe part Japanese guy to play. I don't know. Oh yeah, he looks like he's yeah. So I mean, it's so odd. Asian. <laughs> this is so, yeah, Asian. This is such a weird album. I that's the best I can explain it. Yeah. So what do we got in terms of uh, um in terms of the sale history? Yeah. Ten dollars and fifty eight cents, eleven dollars and twenty nine cents, and twelve dollars and three cents. And whenever I'm going to see my dad bought it, it was fifty cents. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, that shows you. So that would be there. You go. So even the, even this garbage went up in up. price. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a markup. You probably bought it at a yard sale. Oh yeah. Free, you know. Um, what was this? Some of the stores. These because that looks like a then. hand. Yeah. Well. That could be a store. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like one of those, what are some of the old crappy stores we don't have anymore? Not Walmart, obviously. Or so. Well, yeah, well, yeah, one of those kinds of stores, yeah. and they're cheap bins. It's probably sorting through there, hiding in the garage or something. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So let's uh, re review or review. My review rating, that rating is burn it with fire five times. <sighs> yeah. Just so other people don't have to go through it. <laughs> it's like preventative maintenance. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. I, I'm torn on this one just because it's like it's so awkward and overtly gross at the beginning. But like I said, I would you listen to it again? No, not okay. fucking chance. <laughs> not, so, uh, not even a little bit. Dumpster, but maybe not as far as burning. Yeah, okay, dumpster without burning. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. So like, subscribe. Listen, tell your friends. <laughs> We're up to 10 followers. 10 followers, getting there. Uh, Plowing through, and uh, like I said, we got some big albums coming up. Even the next couple episodes, I see some other ones that I really love. Pink Floyd's in like three episodes. Yay! Four episodes. Dire Straits. Oh, it's going to be good. Good. So finally some... Yep. Finally. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for watching. <laughs>